evening, everyone, and welcome to Allen East High School, where tonight the homestanding Mustangs welcome in the Kenton Wildcats. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilly Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. Gilly, we take a look at tonight's matchup. We look at the visiting Wildcats coming in. Kind of a Jekyll and Hyde kind of year. They won six of seven during a stretch, and now they've lost five of six. Well, in this second half of the season, you know, you break it down into three seasons before Christmas, then you've got after Christmas until tournament time. They're getting ready to wrap up, you know, that second half of the season. You're right, Danny. They've, they've hit a tough stretch, but part of that is is the, ga the games that they're playing, the contest, the teams are really, really good. Sure, sure. They're 8-8 eight and eight on the year, 1-5 and five in the WBL. The Allen East Mustangs, Gilly, they come in. They're playing some really good basketball right now. Seven of their last nine victories, and it all starts and stops with a young man who's one of the best in the area, Carson Club. Oh, you know, 5'7", but plays, you know, plays much bigger than that, but what a big heart that he has. He, You're right. He's one of the best point guards in the area, and, uh, you know, he, he's going to have an opportunity to play at the next level. He's going to bluff. Yes, absolutely. He's a bluffing beaver for next year. Gilly, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups for the visitors from Kenton. They'll start number one, Corbin Johnson, a 6'2 junior at 4.5 a game. Number two, Blaine Bushong is a 5'6 sophomore at 7.5 a game. Number three, Gavin Payne is a 6'4 senior at 13.4 a game. Number four, Ethan Yoder is a 6'4 senior at 11.7 game. And rounding out the starting five, number 13, Dawson Miller is a six foot junior at six points a game. The Wildcats are led by head coach Ryan Miller. For the Allen East Mustangs, they'll come in with number two, Ethan Young, a 5'11 junior guard at 12.5 a game. Number three, Carson Klum. We talked about him, the 5'9 senior at 15.5 a game. He'll be a Bluffton Beaver next year. Number four, Deacon Jones is a 5'9 sophomore guard at 8.6 a game. Number five, Trey Hensley is a 5'11 guard, 2.2 a game, and rounding out the starting five, number 10, Logan Helser, a 6'2 junior at 5.6 a game. So, Gilly, we're all set here. Coach Young does, doing a really good job with the Mustangs, like I said, on a winning streak, and he's got to play at a high level. Well, you know what? He He's a constant basketball guy, Coach Young, and he coaches AAU with 419. The, the seniors to be, and uh, or no, juniors to be. I'm sorry, next year he's going to be doing the seniors to be. And, you know, his philosophy is going to be real simple. He's going to he's going to dictate the game. He's going to make his offense from his defense. And he's going to mix a variety of pickup points. And if you don't make the adjustment, those guards are quick enough that they're going to take it and convert them into easy opportunities. Gilly, both these squads had conference games last night. That's what you coach for during the season, taking nothing away from Saturday night games. How do you get your kids to bounce back after a loss or even a win and come back and play a good a good team on the next Saturday hey, night? was right there last night. The sure. Wildcats yes. went to St. Mary's against a good St. Mary's, Mary's team. Yeah. A guy that's won over 600 games. and. They battled and competed, and within, they were within three or four points in the final three minutes, and the turnover bugaboo got them, and it turned out to be, I believe, a seven-point game, but they were right, right there. Uh, Allen East last night, a big win over Lincoln View. There's kids, that's a conference win. They're four and one in the Northwest Conference. Gilly, they're going to be a difference maker deciding who wins this league or not. Well, they're going to make it, you know, like you said, and, and you know, this week, or tonight's game and next weekend is crucial because you know what comes up next Sunday. Tomorrow's Turn the draw, girls' yeah. draw, and then next Sunday is going to be the boys, and not only that, but they're one game back with uh, two, what, two league games yes, remaining, yep, yep. And, and one of those is going to be at Spencerville. I'm not sure who the other one's against, that you got, if you have to know it, but, you know, they've got a lot to play for, and this is a game tonight that really looks good going into the draw because sure. Kenton be in Division Two, sure. and it's a, it, you know, it's an important game for Kenton to, uh, to come back and, like you said, get the kids ready to play, but, you know, they're finishing up the second half of the season, and this game is important, like I said, for the draw coming up here a week from tomorrow. Gilly, these schools are separated by about 20 miles, but I'm telling you, this is a really nice Saturday night crowd. A There's nice a Saturday lot of people here. Absolutely. You know, good fan following by both ball clubs. And, you know, what is it, 15 minutes, 20 yeah, minutes right, drive right. right on right down you know, State Route 309. And, yeah, Kenton's going to support the black uniforms tonight, so we need to make sure that we've got numbers uh, taken care of. I think the only one is Piper, and he's going to be a number uh, zero partner versus 23. So I got to do it. Yeah, I'm going to say I better have the right numbers here. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. And there's the tip and we underway. Tonight's officials are 
an A crew, Gillian A crew, BJ McFerrin, Wayne Allstetter, and Brett Barnes. So here come the Wildcats. They'll start out. There's a dribble drive to the rim, and the bucket's good. Number 25 for the Wildcats. Yeah, they, ran, it, they ran that thing to perfection. Little high post entry with the keep action, and he got to the rim and knocked it in, that being pain. Here comes the Allen East Mustangs. They'll bring it around to the top of the key. This is Carson Klum with the ball. Yeah, Yoder's on him right now. I think that length, but they're switching every thing and then hedging and recovering appears to be. There's Yoder with a nice defensive rebound. Deacon Jones fires up a three-pointer and it's off the mark. Tonight's first quarter sponsor is Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all the area athletes and go Mustangs. There's a three-pointer by the Wildcats. Stephen Piper knocks it in, and the Wildcats lead 5-0. Yeah, that's on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. My, my fault, partner. That's his 22nd made three on the season. Great execution by the Wildcats and on the road to get this five-point lead. So there's a steal by the Wildcats, and everything going Wildcat way right now. Here come the Mustangs. They steal the ball back at half court. 6.41 to go. Danny Homer, Darren Gilbert from Allen East High School. Good deflection and steal there by Deacon Jones. There's a long three-pointer on the top of the key from Ethan Young, and it goes off the mark. Here come the Wildcats. They'll bring it down the floor. This is Corbin Johnson with the ball. Swings it out top. Gavin Payne, he'll dribble drive that one, kick it to the corner. Three ball from the left side, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Allen East. And the ball gets kind of lost in transition there, and everybody's on the floor. And Allen East, Trey Hensley ends up with it. He'll kick it out. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. But where did that start? That, that come off of Carson Klum, you know, and he got tangled up and, and still was on the floor and got it out to his teammate for the quick reverse, and we saw the three by Jones. There's a nice dribble drive by Dawson Miller. That goes off the mark. Here come the Allen East Mustangs. Down 5-3. There's a three ball from the left side from Plum. It's off the mark, and here come the Wildcats. They'll slow it down as they walk it down the court. Yeah, what a great look there by Klum. Just a little bit short. Not enough legs on that, but great execution there by the white and blue. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 and Kenton online at KentonMoose428.com. A nice dribble drive there by Gavin Payne, taking it to the rim hard, and the Wildcats lead 7-3 to three on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Yeah, nice catch in the post with a little spin action. I think they're going to get him right there for a slap on Klum. And there you see the effectiveness of Carson Klum, his ability to get to the rim. A nice job by that young man. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. So Carson Club will go to the Lee's Famous Recipe free throw. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Atlanta, Walpark, Elvis, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Yeah, get ready, because if this is a make, I think you're going to see the home Mustangs go into some form of a press. Klum knocks both of those down. Knocks in his 24th made free throw on the season. So Corbin Johnson will bring the ball down the floor for the Wildcats. He's under a lot of pressure. Gets it across the timeline. Three ball from the right side, and it's good. Ethan Yoder with a sweet stroke from the outside. Yeah, and that one was right over by Coach Young. Knocks in another Spallinger Millwright three-pointer. That makes it 10-5 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. And Allen East throws it away. Everything going the Wildcat way right now. Tonight's three-point sponsor is Spollinger Millwright Services, proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication installation located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spollinger.com. So every time we throw up a three, it'll be a Spollinger Millwright three. Oh, Trey Hensley with a nice aggressive move, and they're going to get a foul, and they're going to say he ran into Ethan Yoder. I finally got all my uh, lineup here done with the uh, black uniforms. I had them in the white uniforms, Gilly, but I finally got caught up. So It's all good. <laughs> you know, Hensley called for his first right there. If he reaches with the inside hand right there, I think he's got a steal and a layup at the other end. Good matchup on top with Corbin Johnson and uh, Carson Klum, two good athletes for both squads. There's a steal by Klum. He's going to bring it down the left side. Yoder picks him up across the halftime line, or half-court line, excuse me. There goes Carson Plum, takes it in. Nice little scoop shot, misses the shot. Rebound comes down, goes back up, and it's good. Nice job by Logan Helser. 
The 6'2 junior knocks it in, and here come the Wildcats down the floor. Gavin Payne, an aggressive style of play tonight for that young man. Gavin Payne's got six of their 12, and the Wildcats lead 12-7 on the Ken Moose scoreboard. Yeah, he's playing his best basketball right now for the red and white, and those numbers are starting to show, and he's off to a real good start tonight. Deacon Jones with the ball up top. He gets Helser. He gets a screen from Helser. Helser goes back into the paint, and he is being guarded. They're going to get oh, Gavin Payne on the foul. That's big for the visitors. Gavin Payne comes in the 6-4 senior. Oh, my apologies. The first foul must not have been on him. That's my apology. I thought it was. It was on the That's, Yoder. I was say, okay. the Yoder had the first one. Here's Klum as he takes it into the right side, and he's going to be That's fouled again. That's a big again. one, too, because I think that's Yoder. You're right. That is Yoder with the foul. Here comes Bushong, number two, to scores table. Ethan Yoder has two fouls already tonight. Ethan Yoder. The 6'4 senior comes in averaging 11.7 a game, so he's going to have to take a seat here with two early fouls in the first quarter, and Coach Miller, a little strategy comes into play here without Yoder on the floor. Entering the game for the Kent Wildcats is Blaine Bushon. You know, does it affect his rhythm, you know, because he hit that deep three over there by Allen East Bench, and now he's got to go to the bench. you got to feel he's probably going to set until possibly midway through the Second quarter. Carson Plum knocks in another Lee's Famous Recipe free throw. 12-9 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Carson Plum's got four for the Mustangs. Here's Johnson with a dribble drive inside. He throws the ball away. It's stolen away by the Mustangs. They'll bring it down the floor. This is Ethan Young. And we're going to get an intentional foul. I think they got Johnston grabbing Brooks running down the right side of the floor. Uh, yeah, I believe so. B.J. McFerrin is discussing it with the officials. And they're going to call an intentional foul. A technical foul. That's on Stephen Piper. I did okay. not see. Did you hear anything? Or no, I, I, didn't. I did not. And he's and, and BJ's explaining it to Coach Ryan Miller. But uh, Deacon Jones will go to the line. He knocks that in. Technical it was all. Shot. It all came. It all came together in one sequence right there. I thought it was a grab in the transition, and you're right, something must have been said. Misses the next one, the ball goes back to Allen East. Coach Miller not happy on the sidelines. B.J. McFerrin, the official, explained it to him, so uh, we'll have to wait and see if we get information on what happened there to relay that to you. But the Allen East Mustangs will take it out of bounds here in front of our booth. Carson Klum with the ball, he's guarded up top by Blaine Bushong. Swings it over. Brady Brooks in the game now for the Mustangs. They'll go top side to Ethan Young. Ethan Young goes back to Deacon Jones. Back to Brooks. Brooks dribble dives, kick out. Three ball from the right side, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down to the Wildcats. That's Good Dawson job. Miller. Good job blocking out right there by the Wildcats. Good execution by the Mustangs. Unfortunately, just left a little bit short on the three. Here go the Wildcats up 12-10 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. There's a long three ball from the left side. And a nice rebound there by Gavin Payne. Yeah, he, he missed the tip in, but Johnston right there. John, Johnston on Johnny on the spot, so to speak, and got the tip in. There's Carson Klum with a little 15-footer that goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Gavin Payne. Gavin Payne's playing a he's, really good he's basketball had a really game good right first now. Quarter, he has. Hasn't he he absolutely has. He is a big physical kid, and you can understand why they got to have him on the floor. He can do it in a lot of ways. Here's Johnson with the ball. He'll swing it around to the right. Back to Johnson on the right side. 2.05 to go. Wildcats up 14-10 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. And they try to go into Gavin Payne, and they're going to get Carson Klum with the foul. Yeah, he's giving up about seven inches right now against Payne. Dawson Miller will trigger the ball in underneath their basket. They'll go Gavin Payne, who's guarded up top by Grant Slusser. And the ball gets thrown away there. Here come the Wildcats. Good block by Slusser right there. They'll go left side. Carson Klum dribble drive. Baseline takes it inside. Off the mark. Gets his own rebound. And he's on the floor. They'll go dribble drive to the left side. Kick it back out. Thought about taking a long three from Slusser on the left side. 
But oh, they'll, they'll, they will pull it. I mean, at any time, <laughs> they will pull it. Okay. Just like the Wildcats. Ethan Young from – are you kidding me, I think Gilly? he heard it. He was at the volleyball line. Ethan Young playing volleyball out there. He knocks in the triple and it's 14-13 on the Kent Moose scoreboard. Yeah, he's My a goodness. rhythm shooter. He had, he had 10 threes in one night earlier this season that Patrick and I covered and – there's got a guarding. Nice three ball from the right side from the Wildcats. Off the mark. That was Stephen Piper. Here come the Island East Mustangs down the floor, and it's good. Brady Brooks knocks it in with a dribble drive, and the Allen East Mustangs have a 15-14 lead. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout on the booth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Back here at Allen East High School, where the Mustangs have taken a 15-14 lead over the Kenton Wildcats. Good first half, Gilly. Both teams, an aggressive style of offensive approach. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of points put on the board tonight. Let's see how much you know, energy they got in the, in the tank since last night having to play. There's a trap on the, on the side of the court there, and they got a foul. Yeah, it was right down the yeah, front of us. That's say. the one where you got it. You can't slap at the basketball. You got to go in and take it. And, and that's exactly what happened. I was kind of confused by the call, but you're right. And Ethan Young slapped down on the ball. Right. And that's where the call comes yeah, from. Yeah, if he reaches and grabs and tries to take it or comes from underneath, he's okay. Good there's, call there by B, B, by BJ. Excuse me. There's a dribble drive at the foul line, and a nice job there by Gavin Payne. He just misses the shot. Here come the Mustangs. This is Ethan Young with the ball. It'll go long three-pointer from the left side. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down, corralled by Deacon Jones. He'll get it back to Young. My goodness, Brady Brooks was clear out by the volleyball line. I was a little speechless on that one, too. <laughs> it's like they're playing horse. Both teams are just letting it rip. Here's Trey Hensley. He'll get it back over to Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones, we're down to seven seconds. Jones dribble drives foul line, takes it inside on the right, and it's blocked. A big time block by Gavin Payne. Shot goes up. Payne gets the rebound, and that's how the first quarter ends. After one quarter of play from Allen East High School, the Allen East Mustangs lead the Kent Wildcats 15 14. We'll have second quarter action right after these messages. Tipster Replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. Eastside Insurance, our instant replay sponsor. And our second quarter sponsor is Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or business. Good luck to all the area athletes and go Mustangs. So here we go, Gilly starting the second quarter. And I'll tell you what, Gavin Payne really flexed his muscles on both ends of the floor. He did, and you know, he had to carry him with Yoder getting that quick second foul. See, he's back in the ball game. You know, he's got to be cautious and not get that third. And Clum's got the ball out top, and he is really being hounded. They go inside, and nice a slip nice, screen. nice really slip nice. screen by Logan Helser. Better pass, too. I mean, right on the money. You want to talk about throwing a dime by Clum. The 6'2 junior knocks it in. It's 17-14 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. There's Johnson with the ball on the left side. They'll swing it over to the left. Here's a dribble drive to the foul line. Kick it back to Johnson inside, and a nice job. Corbin Johnson gets inside. Gilly, that was a nice play, and he's going to go to the lead. Well, that was a great dribble line. drive by Piper right there. Nice rec that recognition there on the little dump down. Strong move by Johnston getting his shoulder square. That's that's two on clumps. Well, you know Corbin Johnson is athletic. We watched him all fall. He quarterbacked the football team. The young man knows well, you know, what remember, he's Well, remember, yeah. he took a season off last year. He, Absolutely. You know, he, he didn't play basketball last year, so. And he knocks that one in. We're knotted at 17 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Corbin Johnson's got five for the Wildcats. There's a three ball from the right side, and it's good. Ethan Young, a Spollinger Millwright triple. And the Mustangs lead 20-17 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Yeah, that's miscommunication there by the Wildcats. They cannot allow that to happen, especially off a free throw situation. Because Young, Young will knock on those in. Gavin Payne tries to nice turn. Nice double team yeah. from the backside by Brooks. I was going to say, you're right. It, he Gavin, went, Payne, Gavin, yeah. was, Gavin was going to the well and trying to get that reverse spin. He tried it on both sides of the floor, and Alanis made an adjustment, brought backside help. 
So here's Ethan Young with the ball up top. He'll go Trey Hensley to the left side. Hensley takes it in the left side. Little one-handed floater. It goes off the mark. Rebound comes down to Yoder, and Yoder's going to walk it down the floor. 6.43 to go here in the second quarter. Allen East leads 20-17 in what's been a fantastic long three ball, and it goes over the rim. What's, I was going to say what's been a fantastic game, and you saw there for the Ken Wildcats, Blaine Bushong. Boy, there, there's no range for anybody tonight. No. Yeah, both, teams, both teams are going to let <laughs> it rip. This Kenton, is fun. <laughs> coming into tonight, they were 304 attempts and converted 100 for 33%. <laughs> This is my first time watching both these teams, and right now I'm really impressed with the athleticism and the offensive prowess of both squads. Allen East throws that one away, and it'll go back to the Wildcats. Well, and this is where Allen East is going to miss the senior leadership right sure. now of Clum because it, it messes with the continuity a little bit, and Jones has to play the point guard. He's capable of doing it, but when it takes you out of rhythm, it can cause havoc for you at the offensive end of the Steven floor. Steven Piper missed that three, and there's a nice little floater down the middle of the floor. And Brady Brooks, who's playing he's a really, really nice half. Yeah. Well, he's had a really good year. He's really turned it on since December, and that's adding to the the luxury of going a little bit deeper with their bench for the Mustangs. Bushong misses that shot. Here comes Young with the ball, and he'll swing it back over to Brooks. Foul line extended. Go back to the left side. They'll go Trey Young. Oh, Three boy. ball from the top of the key, and it's good. Are you kidding me? Ethan Young from Crydersville. Are you kidding me? There's no range out there, Well, the, the problem is there's no communication right now in the rotation for the Wildcats. And give credit to Allen East. They're doing a really good job swinging it from side to side and finding an open uh, player. We'll step aside. We'll be right back after these messages. Stick around after the game and check out the highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. Gilly and I will be picking a Stolly Hustle Award winner. And, oh, we got a lot of choices tonight, Gilly, because there's some really good action. Yeah, out there. there's there's some good play right now, but you know, thank you to the sponsors for making this all possible. Absolutely. Have the broadcast and there's a ton of them. And I know the people of West Central and what? Central. <laughs> Northwest. Oh, just that. You know where you're let's at, just, Gilly. Yeah, yeah where let's you, where just go into generalization here. And, and Without I'll, those sponsorships, oh, yeah. you know, makes I'll, it difficult to broadcast. I'll tell you what. Do you, you think Spallinger and Norwright Wright knew they were going to get their name talked a lot about? Because these teams are just chucking up threes. <laughs> <laughs> they did their homework, didn't they? Yes, they did. <laughs> here come the Wildcats. There's Yoder. He's clear out by the <laughs> top of the Mustang logo. Well, and that shows how much Alan East respects the perimeter sure. game. Nice steal there by Hensley. Gavin Payne throws the ball away. And here comes Brady Brooks. And my goodness, Brady Brooks so valuable for this team right now. He's played a really good first half. Young kind of loses the ball. They're going to get a foul. Trey Young, or excuse me, Ethan Young got fouled on that play. I think they got Bush on. I think you're right. You're right, they did get uh, Blaine Bushong on the foul. 25-17 with 5.07 to go. Allen needs to inbounds it underneath their basket. Top of the key, and there's going to get a screen out top. And they're going to, Gilly, they're going to get Dawson Miller on running through that screen. And that screen was set, and Dawson Miller ran right through him. And Coach Miller not happy at all about yeah, that. Yeah, there's a double high screen there with uh, a curl action for Young. And Miller, Dawson Miller, went through it instead of around it and got caught. Yeah, so Alan East will inbounds it underneath their basket. They get it inbounds, get it into Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones at the volleyball line. He is guarded by Stephen Piper. They'll go Ethan Young, top of the key. Young thought about pulling the trigger, kicks it out to the right side, trying to get it inside to Logan Helser. Long three, are you kidding me? Brady Brooks. And how's it all starting? Um, it's the screens that are being set. Gilly, Brady Brooks shot it from Dollar General. Are you kidding me? There's another long three for the Wildcats, and that's going to be a foul. And, and it looks like Daw yeah, Dawson Miller's going to go to the line, and he was shooting a three from the right side. I think that's on Young. If that's the case, that's his second. So with 4.37 to go, the Allen East Mustangs have upped their lead to 28-17. Yeah, I was wondering how long Alan East was going to wait here. This freshman getting ready to come in, he's starting to see a lot of minutes for them. That be, being number 23, uh, Williams. Hunter Williams, Hunter Williams, 6'3 yeah. freshman. Yeah, he's put some good numbers up for them. 
in limited time. Miller doing a good job at the free throw line for the Wildcats. He absolutely is. Knocking Dawson them Miller. both down. Yeah, knocked him down. Cut that lead to 28-19. So here comes the freshman, number 23, Hunter Williams, a 6'3 freshman. He ain't a freshman anymore, Gil. No, we're late, here. Say, we're late in the season. Yeah, he's, he's no longer a puppy. He's starting to mature. Yep, and nice job by Dawson Miller of knocking all three of those down. 28-20 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Miller's got three. So here come the or excuse me, the Mustangs. Miller kicks it across, and there's a steal. Gavin Payne's going to take it in. Nice job nice by Gavin there, Payne. A little one, two, two, three quarter court. And the Wildcats cut the lead to 28-22 with 4.20 to go. Trey Hensley with the ball. They are double teaming on the wings out there. There's a nice dribble drive. Wow, what <laughs> oh, a floater. Brady Brooks, the 5'8 sophomore, is showing you why he belongs on the floor. Well, I know where he gets it from. Carson <laughs> Klum does it, does it very well. That's and, right. You know, Mr. Brooks here is. And they're doing with, with this with Carson Klum on the floor. So a nice job by these young men. You mean men. on the bench? Or on the, on the bench, Absolutely. excuse me. Excuse and, so, me. and also with Young, and I think yeah. that's a great point for the Wildcats, you know, to go to that little pressure there because I think they recognize just how much leadership and ball handling ability that Carson Klum brings to the table for the Mustangs. Gavin Payne misses another Spollinger no right three shot attempt. Wow, excuse me, the Mustangs break containment there. Kick it to the right side. This is Brooks. Little dribble drive. Kick it back over the left side. Deacon Jones loses the handle, but he gets it back. And he's going to get, uh, they're going to get a travel. You saw that coming. He lost his feet right around the foul line and just fell down. Yeah, that's one of those. He's got to take one less dribble and get rid of it. Now, clumps back into the ball game yeah, for Allen East. You know, he cannot afford to get that third foul with 3.30 to go here in the first half. So here comes Johnson with the ball guarded by Brady Brooks. Good matchup of those two athletes. Bell goes 25, Gavin Payne. Left side, three ball on the way. It's off the mark. That was Steven Piper missing that shot. Here comes Helser. He'll bring it down. Get it to Brooks. Brooks is going to take it in. Misses a shot. Rebound by Helser, and he puts it back up. Gavin Helser. And that's what in. he does, yeah. Danny. He's he's not a you know one of those kids that can shoot the 15 footer, but one thing he does well is he rebounds the basketball and can finish around the rim. There's Corbin Johnson from the right side. Another Spollinger no right three attempt. Misses that shot. Here come the Mustangs, and they throw it out of bounds. Tried to get it over to uh, Brady Brooks, and it just went through his legs. And that's what the communication is. He felt like the the basketball was a little bit too low. And not into the shooting pocket. That's that, unfortunately that's a tough break for Allen East because they did have numbers there to, to pop another three. There's a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth for watching high school basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to Allen East High School with 2.46 to go until halftime. The Allen East Mustangs stretching that lead to 32-22. Gilly, both these teams come in. Canton offensively averaging 55 a game. Allen East averaging 59 a game. They're going to get those easy tonight. <laughs> yeah, it, it's possibly going to be a 70. Could be as high as 80 points the way this contest yeah. is going. And, you know, as a coach, your philosophy has got to, you know, Mix a little bit because of the way the game is being played, you got to save them timeouts at crucial times and crucial points of the contest. There's Bushong with the ball. He get it over to number, excuse me, Tavion Gillespie in the ball game. This is Corbin Johnson swings it out. Thought about taking the three from the right side. Blaine Bushong dribble drive to the right side. Nice double pump. Oh, I thought he was going to make that one off the mark. Rebound comes down to Carson Plum. Yeah, a really good job, Danny, <laughs> getting that basketball to the rim. Oh, my goodness. Unfortunately, just could knock it in. Carson Klum with a nice spin move, and it goes off the rim, and there's Helser with the rebound, and he knocks it in. Yeah, there he is on the glass. I mean, he's just a monster inside. It doesn't look like it, but he just plays so hard with reckless abandon in the post, and if the ball's loose, he's going to find a way and a will to get it and try to score. So Logan Helser will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line for an old-fashioned three-point play. And he misses that shot, 34-22 with 2.09 to go. Corbin Johnson brings it down the left side. That last foul was on Payne. That's his second for the Wildcats. This is Yoder with the ball up top, guarded by Trey Hensley. He'll kick it into the left side. He'll go back inside to Gavin Payne. 
Payne double team, kicks it to the corner. Three ball from the left side, and it's good. Great look. Great, great inside out look. Blaine Bushong with another Spollinger Millwright three pointer, and it's 34 25 with 143 to go. Good job by Gavin Payne not dribbling the basketball and kicking it out the backside for that hard skip. And Knocking three down for the Wildcats. There's Brooks with the dribble drive to the foul line. Gets it over to Hensley. Hensley guarded by Johnson. They'll go Helster foul line up and under. Here's Trey Hensley from the right side. And it's good. Trey Hensley with another Spollinger mill ride three. And it's 37-24 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. There's a steal by the Mustangs. Here comes Carson Klum. He'll bring the ball down the right side. Gets it to Brooks. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Miller. Miller tried to save it. They'll go Blaine Bush on, excuse me, they'll go Yoder up the right side, and he loses the ball. This is Carson Klum doing what he does best, leading them down the lane, right to the right side, misses the shot, and we're going to get a rebound by Gavin Payne. Nice job by Payne. Turning into a Oh, me. my goodness. Did you I, want a breath? <laughs> Ooh, I'm Holy taking a lot of breath here. smokes up and Man. down, up and down. There's some athletes out in Fortnite. <laughs> I'm telling you. I love it, love it, love it. Here's Payne with the ball up top, guarded by Helser. Three ball from the right side, off the mark. Rebound comes down to Johnson in a big That's time a big rebound. rebound. That's a sure big was. time rebound by Corbin Johnson. Are you kidding me? Corbin Johnson snatches that, puts it in, and it's 37 27 with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, he powered himself on that backside. He was going to make sure he was going to get the basketball. He basically displaced Brooks on the backside. But that's the difference between a sophomore and a junior. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. They're going to get a travel call out top on Brady Brooks. And the Kenton Wildcats down 10. Needed that call right there. Entering the game now for the Wildcats. Dawson Miller back in. And they'll put Gillespie back on the bench. So Yoder will inbound him. Yeah, and if you notice, Coach Young has took Klum out of the ball game. He's going to keep, keep him on the bench along with Young with those two fouls. And appears that uh, Kent was going to... So Keep both Piper Yoder right, yeah. and, and uh, Payne on the floor with two each. We'll get it to Johnson. Johnson with the ball. We're down to nine seconds. Get it back inside to Gavin Payne. Swing to the left. Back to Johnson. Back into Payne. Nice entry pass. Corbin Johnson. They a really nice, nice entry pass. Nice execution by the yeah. Wildcats. Absolutely getting the ball into Gavin Payne and a missile of a pass. And Gavin Payne will go to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. Try to cut this lead with two seconds to go before half. Yeah, they definitely threaded the needle right there to the big fella and he caught it. And he misses the first one. Gavin Payne's got eight to lead the Wildcats. Coming played a, in yeah, played 70%, a really nice first half. Yeah. 70 percent from the charity stripe on the season. Second one on the way, and it's good. Gavin Payne has nine. It's 37-28, and there's a three-quarter court heave, and it's off the mark. So after one half a play from Allen East High School, the Allen East Mustangs lead the Ken Wildcats 37-28. We'll have second half action right after these messages. Welcome back to Allen East High School, where we're just about ready to start the third quarter here. Danny Gilbert, Darren Gilbert, our third quarter sponsor tonight is Jones Excavating. R.D. Jones Excavating, serving your excavating needs for over 50 years. Visit R.D. Jones Excavating online to set up your next excavation project for your home or your business. Good luck to all area athletes, and go Mustangs. Jones Excavating, our quarter sponsor. So, Gilly, here we are. Mustangs lead 37 to 28. It doesn't feel like a nine-point lead. It feels a lot closer than that. Well, they're just making another announcement. Mr. Carson Klum, on his birthday, mind you. Oh, happy birthday, Carson Klum. just broke the career steals mark. He's so a not thief. Only, yeah, he's a thief. <laughs> not only is he the career assist, now he is the career steals. Yeah, he's a fantastic player. Happy he's had a fantastic year. Happy birthday to that yeah. young man. And yes. uh, he's got a, a bright one. future in he front does, of him. He does, he does. But, uh, you know, this contest, it's real simple. The team who rebounds the basketball and takes care of this basketball. And if you're the Wildcats, you got to be pleased with the way you played, with the exception of a little run that Allen East put sure. on in the second quarter. But you're down nine points. That's only three possessions. But you can ill afford and there's a steal to right turn off the it bat. over. Yep. Here's Carson Klum, takes it inside, and it's blocked by Corbin Johnson. And honestly, the Wildcats have played a good half. Corbin Johnson... And, excuse me, Gavin, Gavin Payne. Gavin Payne leading with nine, but both those young men have really played good basketball. Yes, they have. 
So here's Carson Plum. He'll get it to the left side. Three ball on the way, and it's off the mark. Rebound comes down, and it goes out of bounds. Just going to go back to the Wildcats. So there you saw a long three by Deacon Jones. Got a good look, Gilly, and it, looked, it went down and came back out. Yeah, I really like how their bigs from Allen East are not afraid. We call it head hunt, and what that means is you want to get your nose on the defender's chest. And they do a really good job of that freeing up the other players. There's a steal by Logan Helser. Steals the ball from Corbin Johnson, gets it over to Carson Klum. This is Klum on the right side. Gets it over to Young. Back to Carson Klum. They'll go inside to Helser. Helser guarded by Johnston. Nice cut there by Klum. Takes it in and scores. Happy birthday, Carson Klum, as he knocks it in. And he gives the Allen East Mustangs the 39-28 lead on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Yeah, nice uh, play there by Helser. There's a nice dribble drive of the Wildcats and a nice feed to Corbin Johnson. Stephen Piper broke down the defense and gets the ball to Corbin Johnson. A nice, smooth move. And it's 39-30 on That's the Moose scoreboard. That's twice he's threaded he has, the needle he tonight. Yeah. What I was going to say is, you know, the two possessions that they turned the basketball over, that's two more possessions for Allen East. There's a skip pass across the floor to Trey Hensley. Double and dribble. he double dribbles. He Trey knew Hensley, it as yeah. soon as he did it. He did. Trey Hensley, he's got a little smile on his face because he knew exactly what he did. <laughs> Trey Hensley he, on the football field oh, is, oh, phenomenal my goodness, athlete, isn't really, he? really fast and really, really good. I like the well, way he plays. Not only that, but what do you do in the spring? Oh, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that track team they had last year and that relay that won the state championship was phenomenal. Fantastic. There's Gavin Payne from way downtown. Misses a shot. Here comes the birthday boy, Carson Klum, up the right side. He's going to take it in, and he's going to miss the shot, but they're going to say – they're going to say goaltending because the backboard was slapped by somebody. Well, the, the rule is the, basket, the, the, the backboard, excuse me, can be slapped, Danny. But if the ball's sitting on the cylinder, right. which it was, which they've, they, they've got yeah. to count that basket there, and that's exactly what happened. Makes it 41-30 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. This is Blaine Bush on guarded by... Guarded by Deacon oh, Jones up top. Jump. Yeah, and Deacon Jones steals the ball and it goes, stolen from him, and everybody's well, on the floor. They got him for a kick. They got him a kick. You're right. That's a great officiating right there by BJ. It was a great job of officiating there by BJ McFerrin. The ball goes back to the Wildcats. 6-12 to go. Danny Holbert, Darren Gilbert from Allen East High School. The battle of 309. These schools separated by about 20 miles. Kick the ball back to Johnson. Johnson dribble drives inside. And a nice oh, left-handed shot by Gavin Payne. Great pass there by Johnston, but what a phenomenal finish with the left hand by Payne. Gavin Payne's got 11, and the Wildcats are down 41-32 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. They'll kick it over to Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones gets it inside to Helser. Helser spins around, takes it back up and under, misses the shot. Good job Re by Payne, yeah. not fouling. It was a nice job by Payne. Rebound by Yoder. He'll bring the ball down the floor with 5.42 to go. I mean, great idea by Helser right there, but the poor angle. Angle and that, that definitely affected the play. Yoder finds Gavin. Are you kidding me, Gilly? Yoder threads the needle, finds Gavin Payne going to the rim, and it's 41-34. Well, that was like, pretty. Well, what I liked <laughs> about that, not only the pass, but the body control by Payne, because he very easily could have run over somebody. There's a nice dribble drive on the left side. <laughs> Deacon Jones just gets swatted in the line. Gilly, Gavin Payne has 13 right now, and he's doing it all for Kent. He's doing it all, but his teammates are also getting it. Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. So, yeah, the Wildcats are, you know, quietly hanging in there. Here's Yoder. Gets double teamed I think they got zero. I think they got, yeah, let's say. They're going to get a foul. Z Steven Piper with the foul. Yeah, he wasn't set there on that screen, and Fish was right on top of it. A lot of people don't understand that call, Gilly, when you see the screener get the foul called on. Rule is you got to give them a step, and if you don't give them a step, they consider it a, a moving screen. There's a nice oh, slip by Helser, and he misses the shot. Gavin Payne corrals the rebound. He's going to take it down the floor. Nice little foul line jumper, and he knocks it in. Gavin Payne you is a You call it a jumper, yeah. but I'm going to call it a floater. I oh, mean, yeah, you're we've right. seen some phenomenal floaters tonight. Gavin Payne is a pain right now for the Allen East Mustangs. He's got 15, and it's 41-36. And there's Gavin Payne with a rebound in the outlet, and it's corralled back again. Good job by Deacon <laughs> Jones with the deflection. Here comes Young. Ethan Young throws it away. Gavin Payne ends up with it. Goes to Yoder on the right side. Yoder finds Piper, and he scores. The Wildcats have trimmed the lead to 41-38 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. And here we go, Gilly, with 420 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, here comes the run, and if you're the home ball club, you need a basket 
Columbia in the worst over, way yeah. to stop this run by the visitors. Hensley gets plumbed the ball. He goes foul line. Go back to Young. Young thought about pulling the trigger on that one. Gets a screen out top from Helser. He'll go Trey Hensley. They'll go back to Young. Oh, my goodness. There's a deep three from the volleyball line. And that's brought in by Stephen Piper. And the Wildcats have a chance to tie this one up. Here's Piper. He'll dribble drive. Spin move. Kicks it back out. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound comes down. And they're going to get a foul on Corbin Johnson. No, the, oh, no. They got yeah, Young you're with, right, the, you're with right. the forearm. Ethan Young gets the foul. You're right. He used the forearm to push off on Corbin Johnston. If that's the case, I think that's his third. Yeah, and Gabe Young's going to take a timeout. With 3.48 to go in the third quarter, we got a dandy here, Gilly. 41-38. We'll be back right after these messages. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is the Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton, online at kentonmoose428.com. Spend a little time with the Kenton Moose there, Gilly. Oh, yeah. It's your great watering food. hole. Yeah. Here's Yoder with the ball. The Wildcats down 41-28, and what a run they've made here to start the third quarter. Here's Yoder, little foul line jumper, and he knocks it in. Nice turnaround by Ethan Yoder. Silky smooth, Absolutely, the 6'4 senior, and they trim the lead to 41-40 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Allen East gets it over to Trey Hensley. Hensley guarded by Yoder. He'll go foul line, kick it back out. Deacon Jones with the ball up top, guarded by Yoder. That's a big advantage for the Wildcats. Yoder's got a lot of length on Deacon Jones there. And Trey Hensley loses the ball, and they're going to get a foul on Stephen Piper. And the Wildcat faithful not happy about that call. I'm not. I'm, I'm surprised that call was made. Gillen. Both players going after well, the ball. My, my only concern is, is it, you know, he got him with the lower, yeah. with his upper body and the lower legs of Hensley and. Well, I love the way the officials are talking to yeah, the kids and explaining to them. He's communicating with the yeah. kids, and that, that, that's important. Kids want to hear it, but well, he's not being belligerent about no, it. He's talking to them. And Ethan Yoder did a great job of walking up to him, asking him for an explanation, and did a great job for the Wildcats there. That's leadership. Yep. Carson Klum with a nice spin move. Gets his own rebound. Kicks it back out. Three ball on the way. Off the mark. Rebound goes down to the corner, and it's going to go back to the Kenton Wildcats. Great effort by the Mustangs right there. My goodness. Unfortunately, they come up empty on that possession. Again, another opportunity with the, with the second opportunity. There comes the freshman. Number 23 for the Mustangs, Hunter Williams, the 6'3 freshman. We saw him play in the first half. Well, he can quietly do some things. You know, he looks like a post player. Yes. But he can really shoot the basketball out to about 23 feet. Here's Blaine Bush on, guarded by Carson Plum. What a nice matchup of two really quick Yeah, he guards. almost got it, didn't he? Did. he? And Yoder takes the ball in, and they're going to get foul. Four. Yeah, they're going to get foul on Ethan Young. That is huge, Gilly. My goodness, Ethan Young with his fourth foul. And they're going to have to bring in Brady Brooks, who had a phenomenal first half, Gilly. Well, and that's where Ethan, you know, he's got to, he's got to use the basketball IQ and realize he has three fouls and, you know, Coach Young felt like he could play through it and got caught right there. So he's probably going to sit until, I would have to say, probably four minutes of the fourth quarter. I could be surprised, but you got to believe that's the, the trend that's going to take place. Corbin Johnson from the right side, and it's good. Corbin Johnson knocks in another Spellinger no right three, and the Wildcats have taken the lead at 43-41. Really good look right there by the Wildcats, and execution-wise, and Johnson knocked down the three there from about seven or excuse me, about 20 feet. Carson Club, happy birthday, are you kidding me? Nice little spin around there by the senior captain, and he gives the Mustangs the 43, oh, we're all tied up, 43-43. Here's Yoder with the ball, he'll go right side, take it in, misses the shot, rebound comes down, it's corralled by Deacon Jones, he'll take it down the right side. Guarded by Corbin Johnson, gets it over to Clum. Grady Brooks from the left side, and it's off the mark. Rebound goes out of bounds, and we go back to the Kenton Wildcats. Yeah, the unfortunate part for that young man is, is, is having to shoot the three coming in, not really warmed up, and uh, didn't catch anything right there, but I guarantee you this much, he's going to continue to shoot the basketball if he's left open. Sure. Here go the Wildcats. They'll go inside. Gavin Payne loses the handle of the ball, and a great job of getting it back. Wow, Gavin Payne with a nice job. Three ball on the way, and it's good. 
Dawson Miller says, hey, I'll take the next one. Another Mullins, Spollinger Mill right three, and the Wildcats lead 46-43. Yeah, good job of the Wildcats getting on the floor after that basketball, and good things happened right there because of it. Gavin Payne runs down the rebound, gets it over to the Wildcats. Here comes Yoder. Yoder goes foul line, kicks it outside. Gavin Payne thought about taking three. Dawson Miller, heat check from the left side. Off the mark, rebound comes down, and it's corralled by Klum. Klum brings it down the floor for the Mustangs. He's going to take it inside, and a lot of contact. Ball goes off the Mustangs, and it'll go back to the Kenton yeah, Wildcats. Yeah, somebody made a really good play. There was a lot of hands in there, but Carson tried to make something happen. Klum, that is, and... Got into the trees, so to speak, and got the basketball uh, rejected on the shot attempt and went out of bounds off the Mustangs. Dawson Miller with a big time three to give the Wildcats the 46-43 lead. Here he is in the corner. This is Miller. He dribble drives to the foul line, kick it over to Gavin. Might Payne. have got away with the walk right there, partner. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> Blaine Bushong with the ball up top. They'll go inside to Yoder. Yoder on the left side of the floor. He'll dribble drive, little spin move, turnaround jumper. Off the mark, rebound comes down to the freshman Miller. He gets it over to Carson Klum. Klum brings it down the floor with 38 seconds to go. Goes inside to Helser. Helser goes up against Gavin Payne, and they're gonna get a travel call. Well, that's yeah. where the length right now with Payne, I mean, he's, he's done a good job defensively, and Helser had the right idea to attack the rim. He's gotta go and get to that left shoulder and that right hand and shoot the little baby hook to protect the basketball. Here's Johnson with the ball. He's going to get it back to Blaine Bushong. They get it across the timeline, and Coach Miller's going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. We're watching high school basketball on WOS7. Welcome back to Alanis High School, where with 23 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Kenton Wildcats, down 37 to 28 at the half, Gilly, have come back for a 46-43 lead. Yeah, they've they've earned everything that they've got here, and they're getting it done at both ends of the floor, especially at the defensive end, and they're turning it into solid opportunities. You know, how big is that fourth foul on Ethan Young? Oh, it's huge. You know? And they're getting a lot of contributions from the bench too. Dawson Miller sure. came in this half and has played an exceptional half. Oh, absolutely. Half. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you know, Payne's holding his own, and Johnson's hit some big shots. And then uh, Yoder got that uh, little turnaround, what's 15, 16 footer, and Bouchon has, has done a nice job defensively. And this is he's Miller. capable of knocking in some big time shots. Gets it over to Blaine Bushong. Bushong guarded by Carson Klum. Carson Klum almost a steal. Bushong gets it back. He'll dribble drive foul line. Little foul line jumper, and it goes in. Yeah, stuck on the flange and fell right over and fell in. Nice job by Bushong maintaining his composure with the pressure of Klum. Here's Brady Brooks. Foul line up. Goes inside to Helser. Helser, no, misses the shot. After three quarters of play from Allen East High School, the Kenton Wildcats have a five point lead at 48 43. We'll be back with fourth quarter action right after these messages. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So, Gilly, the fourth quarter starting up, and Kenton with an incredible third quarter. They were down big time at the half, a 37-28 deficit, and now they're in the lead by five. Well, they, they put themselves in a good position here. Their bugaboo's been the fourth quarter, the last three minutes of the game, maintaining leads. and. Let's see what happens in this last uh, eight minutes here at uh, Allen East. And Ethan Young is back in the ball game. He's got the ball out top. He's double teamed out top. Tries to split the double team, which he does. Did a good job. Gets it with to Helser it. and a nice dribble drive on the left side. And Logan Helser, the 6-2 forward, knocks it in. Cuts the lead to 48-45 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Yeah, the Wildcats tried to double team there, and Ethan did a good job of pulling the basketball and getting his head in the basketball and his leg through. And there's Yoder, goes to the foul line. Getting an easy basket. There's a steal by Carson Klum. Carson Klum goes down the left side, goes behind his back, finds Trey Hensley to the basket. He misses the shot. Rebound by Helser. He misses the shot. Three opportunities there by the Mustangs, and they miss the shot. Here come the Wildcats. This is Piper on the left side. 
He's double teamed, tries to find an open man. Ball's stolen and he gets it back. Everybody's on the floor. Trey Hensley corrals it. Carson Klum comes up with it. He's going to the rim. He finds Helser going to the bucket and it's taken. Oh, what a play by Yoder. Yoder with an amazing defensive play. You know, I can't get the words out fast well, enough. I'm this telling game's you, moving. Well, they're getting her done at both ends of the floor. Klum with the steal, a little dump off and what an outstanding play by Yoder. He could have given up on it, but he didn't. There's a three ball on the way. Off the mark, Gavin Payne with a big boy rebound. Here come the Wildcats up 48-45. He has been a man tonight. Dawson Miller on the right side, guarded by Deacon Jones. He's picked up by Helser, and they're going to get Helser Yeah, they the got foul. Helser with the hand check, turning the corner. If he's going to do that on a ball screen, he's really got to hedge hard and get that top leg over the top. And to stop that dribble drive, and he didn't get caught with the hand check. So here come the Wildcats, 6.49 to go. Danny Hilbert, Darren Hilbert from Allen East High School. Fantastic game this evening. Gavin Payne kicks it back out. Three ball on the way, and it's good. A Spollinger mill right three by Blaine Bushong, and the Wildcats lead 51-45 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Good job going inside out again by Payne, not putting the basketball on the floor recognizing it, kicking it back to the corner and a big shot there. There's Young's three from the top of the key. Off the mark, Gavin Payne brings it in. Oh, Goder grabs it off the rebound. Tonight's fourth quarter sponsor is Artie Jones Excavating. Thank them for all their cooperation sponsoring our game tonight. There's a nice dribble drive by Gavin Payne. He goes up with the left hand, Gilly, and he makes it 53-45. Gavin Payne's got 17 on the night. Yeah, really good job there finishing with that left hand, but a better job dribble driving, finding his way to the rim. And I'll say it again, he's really turned into a slasher. Really nice athlete. <laughs> really nice athlete. So Carson Plum will trigger in underneath the Alanese basket. Looking for anybody, trying to find Helser. Gets it into Trey Hensley, and Hensley's going to be fouled by Yoder. A lot of bodies banging in That's there in the middle. That's his third, I believe. So Carson Plum will take it out at 558. And Allen East Mustangs down 45-53. Kenton played an outstanding second half here. Here's Young with the ball. Carson Plum, three ball from the right side. Off the mark. Trey Hensley with a big time rebound. Gets it out to Jones. Here's Young, top of the key. Off the mark. Rebound comes down to Jones. And he's fouled. I think that's Piper. And if that's his, that might be his fourth. Deacon Jones with the rebound, and he's fouled. And you're right, it was on Steven Piper. That's his fourth. So the foul's mounting up for both teams, and they'll bring Corbin Jones in for Johnson. Corbin Johnson, excuse me, yep. in for Steven Piper. Plum will get it into Helser. Helser guarded by Gavin Payne. What a matchup that's been tonight. They'll go Deacon Jones on the left side. Cart gets it inside to Helser. Helser gets position, takes it up, and he scores. Gavin, Strong excuse move, me, London Helser with a big boy move. He's got 12 on the night to lead the Mustangs. 47-53 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Yeah, the defense wasn't bad. It was vertical. He just made a heck of a move right there and finished it. Here's Gavin Payne guarded by Helser. Kicks it out top. Corbin Johnson thought about taking the three. He'll kick it to the right side. They're going to allow Gavin Payne to shoot that shot. A double team as he gets in. Here's Dawson Miller from way downtown. Misses the shot and a big time rebound by Blaine Bushaw. Gets it back to Payne. They'll go Yoder on the right side, left side. He'll dribble drive. Kicks it back out, Corbin Johnson. That's Five a big offensive go. rebound it right really there for the was. Wildcats, giving them a second opportunity and more importantly, getting to run some time off the clock. Down to 4.50 to go. Corbin Johnson gets it into Payne. Payne double team. Skip pass to Dawson Miller. Dawson Miller three ball off the mark. Rebound comes down. Carson Klum. He finds the outlet and Trey Hensley takes it up on the right side. And are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Blaine Bushong runs the length of the floor and makes an unbelievable defensive play. It'll go back to the wire. Yeah. Excuse me, back to the Mustangs. That was real close of going off of uh, Hensley's leg right there. You know, that was real close, but a great play defensively. That's two big time plays that they've made using their hands and deflecting that basketball. Logan Helser misses the five-footer, and that went down and back out. And the Wildcats continue to lead 53-47 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard with 4.25 to go. This is Yoder. Boy, I thought he was going to shoot. Oh, he thought about shooting it again, Gilly. He's going to dribble drive, takes it inside, up and under, and he scores. Nice scoop there. Nice finish by Yoder. Ethan Yoder says, give me the ball and get out of my way. Wildcats lead 55-47 on the Kenton Moose scoreboard. Here's Klum, takes it inside. Misses the shot, rebound comes down to Payne. 
Gavin Payne with the ball out top. Gets it over to Blaine Bushong. They'll go Corbin Johnson, and they'll reset the offense with Payne up top. 3.52 to go. Wildcats lead 55-47. And we're going to get a foul out top. I think big. they got Jones going through the screen. I think they did. I think they did get Deacon Jones. Yoder tried to set a screen, and Jones got a little physical there, so they're going to call that one. Well, this right now, you know, with this 3.48 to go, this is where the Wildcats have to lean on their seniors and senior leadership. Johnston with the ball. And I think they got Jones yeah. again. And Corbin Johnson. No, they didn't. They got clung. They say they got Carson Klum on the foul. Corbin Johnson did a great job of protecting the ball. And he's going to go to the Leeds Famous Recipe free throw line. With yeah, a this is the tale add. of two halves. Absolutely you know, it is. And, 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 you know, unfortunately, Alan East has got the, only the two timeouts left. So they can't stop Kenton's run. And uh, yeah, Corbin Johnson misses three. the first one. Yeah. Yeah, Kenton with three left in this. Corbin Johnson misses the first one. Second one on the way. And he misses that one. Rebound comes down. Here come the Alan East Mustangs. The outlet is Young. Long three ball for the right side, and it's good. Ethan Young with a Spellinger Mill ride. Three, splish, splash. It goes in. We're at 50-55. Here comes Bushong. He'll bring it back down. Nice little dipsy do. And he misses the shot. And Yoder corrals it for Helser. My goodness, Ethan Yoder saves the day for the Wildcats. We're at 55-50, and we got a foul out top, and they're going to get Jones on the foul. My goodness, we're seeing everything tonight, Gilly. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Big rebound there by Yoder, keeping that alive. Our three-point sponsor tonight is Spollinger Millwright Services, proud to support the Alan East Mustangs. The team at SMS offers quality products from fabrication and installation, located on Hanthorne Road and online at Spollinger.com. Ethan Yoder brings it up against Trey Hensley. He'll get it over to Gavin Payne. He'll get it back to Corbin Johnson. We're down to 310. Mustangs down 55-50 to the Kenton Wildcats. Danny over to Darren Gilbert from Allen East High School. Dawson Miller, three ball from the left side. Off the mark. Rebound comes down, and they're going to get Corbin Johnson on the foul. Great box out by Brooks and also Plum right there. Johnson going off the top with a push in the back. More importantly, that's team foul number four. We're going to see, what, two free throws per ball club here on these next fouls. 2.53 to go. Allen East down 55-50. Karsten Klum with the ball up top. He'll swing it over to Brooks. Trying to find Helser. Gets it over to Helser. Helser guarded by Payne. Helser dribble drive, takes it in, and they're going to get a foul. And I'm not real sure if it's on Gavin Payne or on uh, Corbin Johnston. They're okay, gonna, they got yeah, Johnson. They got Johnson on the foul. That's his second. It's his second. No worries there with 2.40 to go. But what happens here now it's is Logan bonus. Helser. It's a double bonus, and Logan Helser goes to the line with no time coming off the clock. Looks like they had to wipe the sweat off the ball. Boy, these kids have played hard tonight. Yes, this, they this have. The gym is warm, and it is crowded in here. Helser goes to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. First one on the way, and it's good. Logan Helser, great young man yeah. coming in. He's got trying to take tonight. a look at his, his numbers here. Sixty percent didn't look like it right there on the release. He looked really comfortable. Second one on the way, and it's good. It's two big free throws right there. And Coach Young's going to burn a timeout right here. And we're going to take a timeout here in the booth. With two forty to go. We'll be back after these messages. Tonight's instant replay is Eastside Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. Eastside Insurance is our instant replay sponsor. Going to get a lot of instant replays tonight, Gilly. There's a lot <laughs> of instant replays that's going to go on. <laughs> a lot of great action tonight here. A lot of bombs coming from behind the three-point <laughs> line, too. That's been a lot of fun tonight. Nice crowd on hand for this Saturday night non-league action affair here from Allen East High School. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert. And our entire WSN crew. A well, gutsy effort by both oh, ball clubs. You this know, we still got yeah. 240 to go. Yoder's going to trigger it in. Allen Easton, full court pressure here. Yoder gets it in. Just curious if they go a little run and jump here. Yo, That's exactly yes, what they, they did. And there's a near steal. Yoder corrals it. They get across the timeline. Dawson Miller brings that one in. They'll go back to Yoder. 
Yoder dribble drives on the left side. He's guarded by Helser. Down to 224. They'll go Gavin Payne up top. Payne gets it over to Blaine Bushong. Bushong guarded up by Brooks. Dawson Miller double team. They'll go inside to Corbin Johnson. Kick it back out. Dawson Miller and Wildcats taking some. Yeah, they're very big content time. Yeah, right absolutely. now just to pass the basketball around. Big time time off the floor or off the court, excuse me. And there's the foul. I think they Brooks. got Brooks. Yeah, yeah he, he inadvertently got him yeah, across it, the face. That's what I was going to say. He was going for the ball and his hands went across Corbin Johnson's face. You saw Johnson's head snap back and you knew that foul was coming. Well, I'll tell you, very fortunate though are the Wildcats because they threw a skip pass from one side of the floor to the other. And I'm not so sure he wasn't out on baseline with a foot out of bounds. So that's what the kids were saying. Yeah, Corbin Johnston goes to the lead stand stretch from free throw line, and he knocks it in. That's a big one for the young man. That is a big one for the young man. Corbin Johnston with a big time game tonight. He's got 13 for the Wildcats, and he tries to knock another one in. And he misses that one. Rebound to Gavin Payne. Yeah, they're going to get, I think, Carson Plum on the foul. Gavin Payne has been rebounding like a man. Yeah, that is on Plum. Yeah, that's one of those where Helzer missed, inadvertently missed a box out, and that's a no-no from a coaching standpoint. You've got to make sure you get body on body on free throws, and that one, that one came back to, to get the Mustangs right there. Great Payne, effort yeah. by Payne. Payne goes to the Leeds fans, Chesapeake free throw line, and he knocks that one in. He's got 18 on the night to lead everybody on the floor. 57-52 on the Kenton New scoreboard. Second one on the way, and it's good. Gavin Payne with 19. Big offensive rebound by that young man, but more importantly, the two main free throws. Here's Carson Plum and the Mustang. We're at 150 to go. Over to Young. Young at the volleyball line. Gets it over to Brooks. Brooks trying to get it into Helser. They'll go back to Young. Go back into Helser. They throw it away, and it's going to go off Trey Hensley. And Ethan Young was wide open at the top of the key, and he was hauling for the ball. They tried to go inside to Helser. Well, they had the mismatch. Yeah. Brooks had the basketball and had the bigger pain on him. Unfortunately, they turned the basketball over. Stephen Piper with the ball gets it from Dawson Miller. They clear the timeline. We're down to 130. Wildcats lead 58-52, and we're going to get a foul. Looks like they're going to get I think that's Brady Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, Brady Brooks on the foul. I think they're going to put Yoder at the free throw line. Brady Brooks with a nice game tonight with nine points. And Ethan Yoder will go to the line. Yoder with seven on the night. Yeah, shooting just under 70% coming into the contest tonight. And Ethan Yoder steps the line. First one on the way, and it's good. Wildcats have hit their last three foul shots. You know, started slow, hit the big three at the beginning of the game, and then got in foul trouble. Very close, like you said, to double digits here with eight right now. Chance for point number nine, more importantly, to extend this to an eight-point lead with just under 130 to go. Second one on the way, and it's good. 50, or 60, 52 with 126 to go. Here comes Carson Plum, gets it over to Deacon Jones. Gets it back to Young. Young from the volleyball line. Three on the way. It's off the mark. Rebound comes down to Klum. Puts it back up. Gets his own rebound. Brings it back up. Goes to Trey oh, what Hensley. A pass. Nice pass. Trey Hensley scores. And the Mustangs will take a timeout. 60 54, 111 to go. We'll step aside. We'll be back right after these messages. Replay sponsor is East Side Insurance, dedicated to providing the best insurance protection at the most reasonable price to as many people as possible. And thanks to the Kenton Moose for our scoreboard sponsor tonight. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. And there's a good chance if you go in there, you can get your picture with Darren Gilbert. <laughs> now you're going too far. <laughs> I love you, Don't Gilly. believe everything he <laughs> says, folks. <laughs> We're at 111 to go here in the fourth quarter. Corbin Johnson, Yoder triggers it into Johnson. They get it back to Corbin Johnson. They break the line, and Yoder's going to score. Misses the shot. Yeah, I think Mid he thought the foul was going to take place. You're exactly right. He waited for the foul to be called, and it wasn't. Here comes Jones in the Alanese Mustangs. 
Brady Brooks, top of the key. They're going to get Corbin Johnson. More the importantly, the clock's going to stop with 54 seconds to go when Mr. Brooks is going to the line. Listen to these numbers, partner. 17 attempts, 16 made free throws at 94%. Oh, he's solid at the he's line. He's solid at the line. He's going to go to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. Brady Brooks. And he knocks it in, no problem there. Brady Brooks, he's got 10 on the night for the Mustangs, and it's 60-55. Second one on the way, he lets it fly. Nothing but the bottom of the net. 60-56, this one's tightening up, folks. And the Allen East Mustangs are going to foul immediately, and they're going to foul number two, Blaine Bushong. you got a percentage on him, yeah, Billy Yeah, Blaine right now is shooting at a uh, very respectable 60 Seven percent. And Gilly, I want to thank both these coaches for getting us the stats tonight. We can't do this job without the great people at Allen East and at Kenton helping us out, sending us all these stats. So. What well, makes it a little more, you know, enjoyable oh, for everybody. Number one, and number two, it makes us look you know, <laughs> like we know we're talking above about. average. That's right. That's right. So here comes Mr. Bushong, free throw on the way. Cool as the other side of the pillow. 61, 56, 53 seconds to go. Yeah, it looked really good on that release right there. Hit nothing but the bottom of the net. Here's the second one on the way. And he makes that one. Makes it 63-56. Coach Miller wants a timeout. Timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSC. Our free throw sponsor tonight has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Also, stick around after the game as we give out our Stolly Hustle Award winner. You can check out the highlights on the WSN YouTube page. And give, I want to give a shout out to the uh, PA announcer here from Allen East High School who sang the national anthem and not only sang it, it was clutch, brother. It, it, was, was, it clutch. was spot on. Yeah. Great job. Made the hair stand up on the back of your neck or on top of your oh, head. Oh, made you want to be an guess American. Guess what? <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of hair left, but what yeah. I had, it stood up. He was fantastic. He was. Yeah. And he's, he's, uh, He's into the game and very nice man. Very nice yes, man. Yes, yeah. sir. Does a great job. He sure the, does. The Mustangs are fortunate to have him. So here we go, Gilly. Trey Hensley's going to trigger the ball in with 53 seconds to go. Clum's going to get a little bit of pressure from Blaine Bushong. Here comes Carson Clum. We're down to 50 seconds. They'll go over to Young. Oh, Back Wildcats going to go to a little zone Brady set here. Brady Brooks knocks it in. Brady Brooks with a Spollinger no right three. And we're at 62-59, and the Mustangs foul immediately. My goodness, Brady Brooks was shooting from the outside of the gym. He knocked that one. Really, I have not seen this long of threes in forever. These kids have no, no fear. Well, you know, Coach Miller took the timeout, went to the 2 3 matchup. The problem was the wings committed too deep and got caught on a screen, and that's what Alan East does well. Blaine what Bushong a big time shot. And he knocks it in, Blaine Bushong. He's got 10 on the night, Gilly. He's had a fantastic game. Here goes the second one on the way. Yeah, he's made some big free throws for him. And he knocks it in. Well, excuse me, he's got 12 on the night, and it's 64-59. Here comes Carson Klum, loses the ball, and it's corralled by Yoder. Yoder's going to be fouled, and they had to foul Deacon Jones. And I think that's number five on that young man. I could be wrong here. Okay, it's his fourth. It's his fourth. Big mistake by the Allen East Mustangs. Yoder corrals the ball, and he's going to go to the foul line with 31 seconds to go. Ethan Yoder for the Wildcats. Well, one thing they've done here in the fourth quarter is they've made their free throws. They've converted them. Yes, they have, and he knocks that in. Makes it 65-59 with 31 seconds to go. As a group coming in, they were shooting 65% as a team. And they have elevated that stat for sure. Second one on the way, that's good. Yeah, those are big. Here comes Carson Plum down the right side. Gets it over to Young. Young goes up top. Brady Brooks from the left side. Misses that one. Rebound comes, they're gonna get, yeah, they're gonna get Deacon Jones on the foul. He pushed off the back of Ethan Yoder. I can see it from here. And Yoder's gonna walk to the foul line. Yeah, that's one of those. He got a hand in the, the mid, middle part of the back and the official's right there on top of it. Very well officiated game tonight by these Absolutely. three gentlemen. They do a fantastic job. 
more importantly, they communicate with the coaches and the kids. Absolutely. And the Wildcats got a chance to maybe ice this one with these two free throws. And that was Deacon Jones' fifth. The freshman Miller comes back into the game. Now this is one of them. They got to get the basketball and they got to go and they got to go in a hurry. But unfortunately, the problem is they don't have any timeouts left either. Yoder steps to the least famous rescue free throw line and he misses that one. Allen he's still with a glimmer of hope with 22 seconds to go. And Coach Miller's going to take a timeout with 22 seconds to go. Gilly, if you're Kenton, the secret here is just knocking down free throws and keeping the ball, right? Well, I think you've got to recognize or hopefully recognize that Allen East is done on timeouts. So that's where you tell the kids to just take your little sweet time to go get the basketball if, it, if they, you know, would happen to score and just take and walk after the basketball. And the official can – typically officials won't start their arm signal for the five-second count unless you, they absolutely <laughs> see you going yeah, right, at a right, snail's right. pace. But that uh, – I'm sure that's what he's talking about. Let's not uh, stop the clock for unnecessary fouls. And if they do score, be very nonchalant about going after it. Our three-point sponsor tonight has been Spollinger Millwright Services. Proud to support the Allen East Mustangs. The team at SNS offers quality products from fabrication to installation. Located on Hamthorn Road and online at Spollinger.com. So Yoder will go back to the free throw line. Wildcats lead 66-59. And he knocks that one in to get the 67-59 lead. Here comes Carson Plum up the right side, gets it over to Young. Young from the left side, shots up, off the mark. Rebound comes down, and it's corralled by Dawson Miller, and he will go to the free throw line, and that foul is going to be on number two, Ethan Young. I think that's Ethan's fifth. That is his fifth. Yeah. So they will bring in... With 14 seconds to go, this one all but over. Dawson Miller will go to the line. Miller's got six, and he misses that one. 67-59. Coach Miller's telling his kids to get off the foul line. He's going to keep Yoder up there on the right side. And Miller lets the second one fly, and it's good. Dawson Miller was seven tonight. Wildcats lead 68-59. Here comes Carson Plum, gets it over to Hensley. Hensley loses the ball, and that's going to wrap it up. Yoder's going to walk that one away, and the Kenton Wildcats come back and get a big win, 68-59 on the road. Gilly, your thoughts on the Kenton Wildcats' second half performance? It's the second half performance, the leadership of their seniors that uh, you know, stepped up and, and finished off a game that they had struggled with early, you know, throughout this season. And to do what they did on the road over here in a nice environment with a, a nice crowd, the big part is they made their free throws down the stretch. And, you know, that's been the bugaboo, like I said, finishing games. But kudos to them. They finished it. And, uh, you know, Allen East, you know, started the game very well. But uh, right around the corner, Tournament time, absolutely, baby. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, everybody's going to go in zero and zero. And, uh, but, uh, heck of a high school basketball game. If you like basketball and like seeing it up and down the floor, you're definitely going to get your money's worth, or you did get your money's worth. Yeah. And hopefully, you guys that watch it enjoy it because, uh, the kids laid it on the line at both ends of the floor. Gilly, our Stussel, st excuse me, our side game time. That's okay. Our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. We're going to go with the big man, Gavin Payne. 19 points to lead the set Wildcats. Set the tone. He, set set, it, he it, absolutely it, set the tone. Well, not only offensively, but just his defensive presence and, you know, catching the basketball like he did. And because they made some really tough passes to him, and he secured the basketball and finished it. Defensively, had a couple nice block shots, but his overall length, his ability to get to the rim, not run over anybody, and drive and slash. That senior is very well deserved for that honor. Yeah, tonight. and he plays so under control, and he's a strong kid, and he just does the things that Kenton needs him to do. Getting on the floor, getting on the board, scoring when they need a point. Really nice ball player. He is a really nice basketball player. He's put the time in, you know. He's another one, unfortunately, that, that missed some time with an ACL tear, and to see what he's doing and how he's moving. Uh, you know, congratulations to that young man and and uh, just, a, just a heck of an effort by uh, the red and white. 
And that'll wrap it up from Allen East High School. For Darren Gilbert, our entire WLSN crew, and myself, Danny Holbrook, the final score, the Kenton Wildcats 68, the Allen East Mustangs 59. We'll see you next time on WOSN.